wait for a couple of minutes more. Uh, yeah, I think we can start and uh, don't wait for anyone. <laughs> so yeah. OK, OK, that's great. I think that we should be uh, on time. Uh, so dear friends, good evening. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Marina Latuha. I am academic director of GSOM doctoral program. And uh, today I will be with you and guide you uh, through the specifics of the program, some specifics of the admission process, and um, the like, competitive advantages of the program mm -hmm. comparing with other doctoral programs. Um, so, uh, we start first with the introduction of the Graduate School of Management. Um, then we move to the discussion on the on the um, program, and I will give you some highlights, uh, some important issues uh, concerning the, the content of the program and some uh, specific objectives of the program and what we expect from our doctoral students and what kind of opportunities we uh, suggest for our students. And then we finalize our discussion with the uh, some issues about admission process and Q&A session. Uh, so, Natalia, may I ask you to download the presentation, to share the presentation? Yes, just a second. Okay, I hope that everybody see um the presentation and i can uh i can say that if you have a questions um during like my presentation you may put it in the chat so it's not necessary to wait for q a session you can put it in the chat and after i finish with the with the main presentation i i will look through the chat and i answer all your questions so um Maybe Natalia, you can you can do it. Okay, th th this is on the full screen. Yes. Um, so, uh, why Graduate School of Management uh, for a doctoral program? Um, maybe maybe you you know and um, for sure you already know that uh, Graduate School of Management is the number one business school in Russia with a global vision and management competences adapted for the uh, Russian labor market. And Jastom is a business school with a unique educational and research environment that uh, help us to achieve our um, scientific results and research results. Uh, Graduate School of Management is recognized leader uh, in not only in Russian business education, but uh, abroad as well, which is reflected in a different international accreditations uh, that you can, uh, you can see on the slide and the higher uh, rating in different uh, university ratings. Within this environment, we created the first doctoral program in Russia based on international standards of education and management, which is relevant to uh, PhD standards. Uh, in 2017, the program was totally reconsidered. Now all courses are taught in English with a great focus on research competences development. By now, we have a six state-funded places and a great support for all our doctoral students and their research activities that I highlight a little bit further. And uh, this is actually, we are the first uh, business school that um, have the academic program for their doctoral students, which is relevant to the many other PhD programs in many leading universities and business schools. So basically, in our program, uh, our doctoral students are involved in the same courses that are taught uh, by leading universities in their doctoral programs. Uh, the program objectives is uh, to facilitate, uh, Natalia, can, can it be like next slide? Yes, uh, the, program, the program objective is um, to facilitate research environment um, in Graduate School of Management through training high skilled researchers in business and management and of course, we are looking for involving our doctoral students in research projects uh, that are run by our professors. But uh, I can say in advance that all our research projects are done in collaboration with the leading professors, within leading researchers, 
who are published in higher rank academic journals. So I can say that all our research projects and research topics are like up to date that can be checked uh, uh, by different like journals, special issues and other uh, other research environment that is relevant for a particular topic. The program duration is three years and it's very important to mention that the program is for those who would like to take research as a career track as our primary objective is to educate future well-known researchers who can be equal players in the global academic world. So our objective is not only just to, to prepare you to receive a PhD degree uh, 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 or candidate degree um, by St. Petersburg State University, but our objective is to integrate you in an academic society. Our agenda is to give you the particular background uh, networking for for you to be part of this research community. Our program has a number of competitive advantages. Uh, and, uh, and, and Natalia, can you just move further? Yes, our program uh, has some some competitive advantages. So first of all, this is research conditions and environment, whereas we lead uh, joint research projects with the leading academics and researchers with the aim to have publication in higher rank academic journals. Basically, this is the only way to be integrated in a research society, to be involved in uh, up-to-date research and to publish this research in the leading uh, journals in the field of economics and management and international business. Uh, we suggest monthly scholarship and funding for all doctoral students to participate in the different conferences, paper development workshops, doctoral colloquiums that are organized by the leading academic associations, uh, like, for example, Academy of International Business, Academy of Management, European International Business Academy, Strategic Management Society. So it means that we support our students and we actually push our doctoral students to be part of uh, those academic associations and to take an active part in the different conferences, workshops, uh, to be integrated in this uh, academic world. Uh, I, I also should mention that we provide uh, uh, unique research capabilities to all our doctoral students um, with their great involvement in um, JSOM Research Center activities. And we also, as already mentioned, suggest that all courses that are suggested for the uh, students um, developed and, uh, um, with the collaboration with the leading professors and with a strong orientation to academic curriculum in leading universities and business schools. Uh, so the next slide, please. You can see on the slide our program structure and basically um, there are a lot of activities um, that go throughout the three years of uh, the study. So the main line is uh, to proceed with the fun to, to have a focus on fundamental theoretical issues and methodological issues. And uh, um, we have a different courses which is um, connected to understanding how to do research in terms of the methodological way and how to choose your empirical strategy, how to build the theoretical background of your work. And uh, we see that within the first year, this is a many, many different courses would help you to, to uh, become a researcher. Um, this is very important because um, this is a special attention um, that usually doctoral programs pay to the, um, for, the, for the students to be able to understand the specifics and peculiarities of this uh, writing and researching process. And of course, uh, as outcome, this is a research proposal, a research uh, uh, plan, uh, literature review analysis, creating the research methods. This is the end of the first year. Then we will move to the second year. We uh, go in deeply in details uh, with the research. Uh, this is uh, about additional courses that help you to polish your uh, writing skills, your researching skills, 
And uh, basically, there are a lot of different activities about, again, being uh, in a different conferences and different workshops, different colloquiums. And uh, of course, this is the uh, main year to conduct your empirical part of your research to proceed with the data collection to con like to build a link between your um, empirical uh, part and your theoretical background. And during the third year, this is a finalizing year when you prepare in the thesis and you actually continue to be part of the research environment in Jusom and in the world research environment with your again active participation in in the different conferences, in the different events uh, that take place not only at GSOM, but uh, again in the different academics, academic societies. And uh, we also see that it's very important that you become uh, new experience in the uh, in teaching so uh, the idea is that you're not only the researcher but um, you will be the part of the teaching society in just so and uh, this can be the first step into your professorship uh, in the future uh, if you sure that the academic uh, career, career this is your exactly track and on the next slide, you may see some courses like they are not limited by those courses, but uh, this is like a kind of examples uh, what you are, you'll have in your academic curricular. So from one side, we have some basics like uh, uh, hard skill courses, which is about the Contemporary economics, uh, contemporary theory, organization, and management. This is necessary for, for you to understand how to um, position your research with the, with the different theoretical like concepts and theories. Um, there is requirements that you need to pass the history and philosophy, the philosophy of science and English uh, exams to be able to get your degree uh, in the three years. Um, I think uh, from another side, we have a courses for development of the research skills. So this is uh, introduction to research methods and management. This is a different method courses uh, uh, like econometrics, and we are planning to have a courses about the uh, qualitative methods of the research that can be um, like a special seminars not within the curricular. Uh, so we also suggest. Um, uh, course, theory building course, research paper writing and publishing course, uh, how to use the context in your research and uh, different kind of research work that can be defended as a, as a research project. So you can see that it's quite solid and systematic view on the um, academic curricular uh, on your like study that help you to build your research skills. Um, so the next, yeah, the next slide. And um, be able to support uh, our doctoral students uh, in our intention to integrate them in the academic society. We have some requirements for the doctoral students. Uh, for example, we insist on membership in different academic association and participation in annual conferences including paper development workshops and doctoral colloquiums. And of course, as already mentioned, all um, those activities are um, reimbursed by the <laughs> that, um, you, you, you participate um, in these activities. Uh, you, you can participate in those activities. Um, like it's no cost for you. Uh, so this is uh, already paid by the program. And um, we also um, insist on your participation in different research projects that are organized by your academic advisors. So they are run by your academic advisors in uh, different research centers. This gives you the helicopter view on the research process. And this is also the part of networking process that is really important uh, to be integrated in a um, research environment. And of course, a monthly scholarship uh, regulation, you can see additionally um, from an, an additional uh, web page. 
that uh, um, support you to be in alignment with all the KPIs that we said there are special KPIs, uh, how you should proceed with the publications, for example, with your activity within the courses. So um, may I conclude there that it's not like very easy to be part of the program. And so it, when once you are um, in a program, it means that you need to, um, um, to work hard and uh, you basically need to be fully integrated in this um, research activity. So this is not possible to combine uh, your um, study on a doctoral program and like, for example, or working pro, um, working somewhere. So this is exactly the greater focus that should be done um, for this particular activity, which is related to the research. And you can see on the right side that there is some KPIs for the doctoral students uh, in terms of the publications. And those KPIs are not very, uh, again, simple ones, so that they are quite hard ones. And um, we expect that uh, um, you'll have at the end of the program and at the end of the um, your study um, at least one publication in higher rank academic journal and uh, uh, two papers uh, that can be published in Russian journal. Of course, if you don't want to be published in Russian journals, you can just replace uh, those publications by uh, another publications. Uh, in, a, in an international journals, but all journals that we are target uh, should be uh, within the particular uh, specified list of the journals. That is important uh, again uh, for uh, to support your research activity. And uh, um, at the end, as a result of your doctoral study, we expect that uh, you prepare the thesis uh, by the end of the uh, third year. And uh, final thesis defense uh, will be in English. It's not a doctoral dissertation defense. And um, there are actually two different uh, events that will take place after the graduation. So the final thesis is like your paper-based uh, defense that you present all your papers, you present your research, uh, you present your findings, your outcomes. And based on that, you move further with your doctoral dissertation. And of course, uh, we see that all those KPIs that I maybe seem to be quite intensive really help you to proceed quite intensively in terms of your integration to the academic society, to the research society, and uh, to be fast in your research career. So, on the next slide, uh, you see the different examples of different topics that uh, currently, uh, by now, GSOM has an um, expertise. So I wouldn't say that this is the only and the one like topics that you can just uh, research and be involved in. Of course, it can be some subtopics within uh, those titles within those directions. Of course, it can be like um, topics nearby, but I would say that um, in our school, we have quite strong marketing expertise. Um, all issues related to the marketing research um, actually are well done in the school. We also have a very strong background for international business. Uh, this is about uh, multinationals, emerging market uh, firms, emerging market multinationals, internationalization of uh, different companies, including state-owned firms, like political connectedness and international business, uh, about the global environment and deglobalization processes. Uh, we also have quite strong background in terms of the human resource management and talent management and everything which is related to human capital and diversity management. And uh, we have a background which is related to entrepreneurship. So uh, around those topics, uh, it's possible to conduct research, it's possible to be part of those projects, it's possible to be in uh, with the already existing projects because uh, our academic advisors, 
the, they used to involve their doctoral students in ongoing projects just uh, to for past integration um, of doctoral students in, in the research work and to give them a quite good start um, in terms of their research and publications. And uh, some of the topics, some of the areas, uh, as I already mentioned, are done, I researched with the collaboration, with cooperation of uh, uh, leading professors uh, from leading business schools. And basically, if you open the uh, higher rank academic journals in the field of the management and the field of international business, and you can see some like names and surnames, and most probably you will have a chance to work with them on your own project because uh, some of them are um, already in a collaboration with uh, JSON professors. Uh, so moving to the admission uh, issues uh, for, to for 2021, uh, we may say that um, admission um, will take place in um, basically in uh, July and August. And but before you need to be prepared with the documents and with your research proposal. So for Russian citizens, uh, you need to submit an application uh, via website on a person. An application consists of different documents, your passport, your diploma, so uh, photos, application for admission with a personal signature, and some like official documents which is uh, needed for the uh, technical, like for an organizational process of admission. And you go through two exams uh, to be passed. One is economic and management, and uh, which is consists of written part and uh, oral part. So in written part, you just uh, proceed like with the test. And uh, with the oral part, you present your research direction, you present your research proposal, basically uh, to show your research motivation and how you see yourself in the future as a researcher, as a, as a teacher. So um, what topic is interesting for you and um, what a research gap uh, you would like to cover. So it means that you should be prepared to argue and to discuss your topics uh, from different sides. So it's not only just the, the title of the project, but you need to be prepared and you need to prove that it's really important and it's really interesting for you. And uh, this is this is um, exams to be passed. So this is nothing like I would say complicated, uh, but you need to show your motivation to be part of the of the uh, program. And for international applicants, basically. Uh, this is quite um, the same procedure, the same with the with the documents, uh, with their like official uh, portfolio that uh, should be um, should be submitted uh, online, and it's also all the documents should be in English. And uh, maybe I just forgot to mention that. The exam will be in English the, for Russian citizens as well. And um, there is there is a list of the documents. I'm not going to, I mean, like name it now, but you can easily download it from the website or to um, um, screen the QR code uh, to have a, a like admission uh, rules for uh, international and uh, another PR code for Russian citizens. Uh, what is uh, important that uh, you need to prepare the research proposal, as I already mentioned, that um, it will be the part of your uh, oral exam or oral part of the, of the exam. And uh, there are different areas that um, you should cover in your research proposal. So first, this is a statement of the research problem. So how how you see the pro the typicality of the program and uh, of, of the problem and why it's important, why it's um, worth to be uh, researched, um, what is the research gap, 
and um, what will be your role in like filling this research gap? Uh, it would be good if you may think about the research questions, um, so or some hypotheses that you are going to support by your research, or some propositions uh, that is related to your research gap. Uh, the third area uh, that, that you need to mention and you need to discuss with us is uh, your theoretical framework, your theoretical base that you are going to use in your work. So it, it uh, help us to see that you are smart enough in, in uh, terms of the phenomena uh, that you are going to research and your suggestions about uh, a possible empirical Mm, strategy, possible your research design, and uh, expected results and contribution. Um, that is also show us that you do some important work, important research, which will be in demand uh, by um, leading academic journals and uh, um, within the the. Um, the, the research area within the your research area. So um, this is um, the overview of the research proposals that should be peered and negotiated in advance. And on the next slide, you see the admission process uh, actually uh, uh, already started the application uh, for international um, participants. Uh, so in March, so it's quite soon next week, we start with the application for a Russian citizens. So it will be open uh, um, application. Um, so this uh, submission system will be open. Uh, in July, uh, this start of uh, application in person period for the Russian citizens. And uh, in August, in the beginning of August, we will have a exam date for uh, written part and oral part. Uh, so the concrete date to be uh, announced additionally, uh, but you may you may just uh, put a note that it will be in between the August 3rd and August 14th. So, uh, basically, this is a, a timeline for admission. And if you have some questions which is related to the like a content on the program, some maybe outcomes of the program, requirements uh, within the program for a doctoral students, uh, you may address um, me by email, or of course we we will have a Q and A session now. Uh, but for all questions which is related to the admission process, to the documents, dates, uh, process, please contact Natalia Dalotska uh, because Natalia um, is just uh, head of this process uh, of admission. So. Uh, dear friends, I think that like I'm done with with the with the uh, my presentation, and I really looking for your questions. If you have, hopefully you have. Maria Legovna, thank you very much for your presentation. It was an honor to hear uh, from you this valuable information. I uh, would like to clarify one thing. Um, the thing about exams, uh, will uh, they be held uh, online or offline? Do you have any information? about? That? Yes, uh, all admission process will be online. I mean, all exams will be online. Uh, does it mean that it will be like in uh, Teams or somewhere else, or maybe in Blackboard, where we will? Um, um, I think that we will use team, Teams for that uh, purposes. So uh, it will be not a Blackboard for sure. Uh, so it will be Teams probably. With high probability, it will be Teams. Uh, but it will be Teams with uh, like proctoring or uh, like without? Uh, we expect that for the written part, it will be a proctoring procedure. But again, I'm I cannot say exactly. 
uh, now. But for the oral part, I mean, for the like uh, discussion part, it will be of course no proctoring because you just uh, sign in and uh, you see like me, maybe some other colleagues, some other potential research advisors, and we just talk. So, thank you. But it will be online, so it means that you do not need uh, physically uh, to be in St. Petersburg in a particular day and time and in a particular, let's say, building. So what you just need is to have a good internet connection. And uh, of course, you can go through the uh, JSON website uh, to search uh, the page with the academic advisors for the next year. Uh, the updated list of academic advisors will be available at the end of May. So um, you can go and see who uh, will be academic advisors for the um, year 2021, so with whom you may work. And it means that, of course, you need to see the, the, the particular, like, areas of the research interest of those uh, professors, of, the, of the, those, those advisors. Uh, but again, it can be the subject for, for negotiation, of course. Uh, Maria, I also would like to ask you, uh, for example, if uh, I have an interview and I'm speaking about my uh, research proposal, uh, should I say that my scientific advisor will be that person, we already have an agreement, or should I say that, for example, it will be marketing department and I will go deeper with this topic, for example? Yes, it, it's it's okay, actually, if you collaborate with your potential academic advisor before the formal admission process. So you may contact um, uh, some like uh, persons uh, by email to say that you are going to um be admitted to the uh, doctoral program and uh, you're interested in a particular area and uh, you can discuss whether this person whether this academic advisor um may work with you and uh, actually uh, has interested to work with you but uh, you may just declare that you will be very interested to work in like say marketing area and you have preliminary agreement or you just will have uh, after their uh, admission process and uh, like if successfully uh, that you would like to work with this professor and if uh, he or she um, has a uh, free places let's say because in Jason we have a limitation uh, that um, each academic advisor um, may have no more than five students and it's not only the first year students this in total so it means that probably this person already um, had like students, uh, second year student, a third year student. Uh, and it means that maybe um, they have only one, just one place uh, within this like, pool of five. Um, so, but of course, everything can be negotiated in advance. And if you, for example, still do not know where to go, uh, I mean, in terms of the area or with whom you would like to work, you may, um, after the graduation, you may like you can be in touch with the different professors with the different backgrounds. And for example, we have a lot of cases once when students like applicants, uh, they are uh, feeling one way and after the admission to the program, they change their opinion, they see that, for example, there are di different ongoing projects with another academic advisor, with another professor in another area, and they seems to be quite interesting as well. And um, this is like a discussable situation. But of course, to start with your uh, proposal, you need to have a, at least preliminary understanding uh, of your research area, potential area of the research. Uh, okay, I think maybe if no one wa uh, wants to ask, I would like to ask uh, one more time about uh, English uh, uh, exam. Um, does it mean uh, that we will have like a Google document with this uh, TOEFL based exam 
or it will be like organized in a special program that uh, uh, the pages will be changed or something like that because uh, you know that if it's TOEFL based exam it usually is done on uh, uh, laptops uh, or computers uh, how it will be organized so just to know because I know that uh, for example when, when it was no coronavirus situation uh, people just had papers and that's it. Will we have like the same but digitally or how it will be organized English test? Natalia, I think I need to forward this question to you uh, because uh, maybe maybe you can share uh, how it was done last year. Um, I'm not sure about last year in a um, doctoral program, but uh, I can um, say how it was uh, on master programs because I think the process is the same. Uh, so yes, um, our applicants can use uh, some uh, paper some paper to to make notes, uh, but before the exam uh, they should um, uh, show these papers that it's uh, it's okay, it doesn't have any notes, and so after that they can use papers during the exam. Okay, I think you do understand my question. I, I'm uh, speaking about uh, the format. For example, I know that uh, master students are doing GMAT. How so? How GMAT was done? So yes. if it was online, uh, students not students people who would like apply. <laughs> <laughs> these people uh, were sitting uh, yes. in front of their computers and it was like a Google document where they were like uh, uh, trying to answer these questions of Jamat. It's not, it, it wasn't a Google document, it was a special program with a real test and so, uh -huh. yeah. So, but could they, like, for example, I'm answering question one, but I'm not sure, <laughs> moving to question two, uh, could they get back to the question one? Was it possible or not? Um, I'm not sure about this question, so Ekaterina, can you please write me to the mail and I will answer you. Okay, okay thank you. Mm -hmm, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Dear friends, any other questions? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, you're you welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but maybe this information will be also available for uh, the people. Okay, I would like to ask you, um, oh, I even forgot what I wanted to ask. Uh, I, would, uh, I would like to ask you uh, about uh, the uh, procedure uh, of um, being an assistant uh, on any department. Uh, as far as understood, you could be an assistant uh, as a second or third year and depends on an agreement with the department. So like, is it true that uh, I can like work or for a department uh, like an assistant from like second or third year? Yes, theoretically, is it true? It's true, theoretically, but uh, depending on your again research activity and the 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 possibility within the particular department to employ somebody, uh, some people uh, who um, can, can be assistants. But uh, I can say, um, like, standing a little bit your question, I, I, I can say that uh, in the Graduate School of Management, uh, we'll have a system of integrating the doctoral students after their graduation. Uh, to the research and uh, teaching environment in graduate school of management. So we don't want you to leave, I mean, uh, uh, to go somewhere. Uh, and, um, that's why we have a, a special um, research, uh, a special postdoc program and research assistant program that uh, help us to integrate you in a deeper, different departments with the different positions, uh, and um, for you to continue to finalize your dissertation, uh, uh, but not to lose this kind of connection with the with the school, and not to lose the connection with your like a professional uh, background, and uh, you may just serve as, a, as a, an instructor for different courses. But according to the rule of Saint Petersburg State University, you cannot be like uh, like a full uh, instructor like a professor uh, for that for the course so you may just 
assist uh, for like seminars, like workshops and etc. But this is also a valuable experience. But back into what um, you asked me that, uh, yes, we have different programs, research fellows and postdoc programs that help us not to lose you after your graduation. And it's possible even to be integrated in this kind of um, assistantship uh, starting from the second year. Because during the first year, it's quite intensive uh, courses. I mean, course uh, course intensive year. So you have a lot of courses. Basically, what I mentioned uh, in the slide uh, with, um, about the courses, they are mostly during the first year. So it means that uh, you need to be very uh, hard working during the first year because you need not only to proceed with the courses, but to be able to create your like a research uh, proposal, your research idea to finalize it. Uh, because in the in the admission process, you just um, give a brief overview. But uh, once you are in uh, within the program, you need to go deeply into details. Yes, but yes, it's possible. Alexander, thank you very much. Uh, and last question, maybe uh, just little clarification. Uh, I saw that uh, like international students have, have an ability to uh, just deliver the certificate of any international exam, but as far as understood, <laughs> one more time, Russian students need uh, to pass this total based exam, right? Yeah. Yes, you're exactly right. The Russian students uh, have to pass exam and they uh, can't bring a certificate instead of our just some exam. Unfortunately, but yeah. Thank you. <laughs> OK, any other questions? Uh, Sergey Yermilov is uh, has uh, joined uh, us a few minutes ago. So maybe Sergey, do you have any questions? Because we now have a question and answer session. So uh, the presentation uh, was passed. But I think that we can just share the presentation with the um, our audience, right? Uh, yes, and we will send uh, the video as a recording of our presentations to all participants, so yeah. Sergey, but it's um, you can go ahead with the questions, actually. If you have. Oh, no, thank you, colleagues. I think there are no current questions from my side. <laughs> oh, OK. Thanks so much. And um, maybe one just small comment from my side that um, you need to have a very good uh, level of uh, English, knowledge of English, because this um, many courses are delivered by international professors and uh, um, they are quite uh, fluent uh, in English and sometimes they English is their like a um, um, their language, uh, so and all of course research done in English. It's not only because our like our uh, program in English, but all publications in the, in the higher rank academic journals they are done in English, and you need to be able to read, to understand, and to be familiar with the particular terminology. Uh, so and you need to, to be able to write correctly um, your research work. And it's quite hard to, to be done as well um, because there is special like language or special style. That's why you need to have a very good background in terms of English to be able to um, proceed with this um uh, research work but it does not automatically mean that if you are not like in management area uh, if you are not in this kind of uh, uh, research um language uh, it does not mean that this is obstacle for you it means that if you have a in general a good level of uh, english it will be not so hard for you to uh, be integrated in this 
this kind of professional style and professional writing. I will also have a little question about the interview. Um, not only about the interview, but all the application procedure when uh, I am just um, uploading my documents and other things. Uh, will I have any extra score if, for example, I did an extra course like uh, SPBU-based, or maybe if I, I already have some um, publications, or uh, it will be just... Uh, in an interview, so I can mention that, for example, I'm already working in this marketing field uh, and so on and so forth. So how should I present this uh, uh, information about myself? Uh, you basically may prevent this information during the oral part of the exam. When you present your research uh, proposal, you may say that, for example, uh, your research um, ideas and maybe some already existing research results was uh, already published in some some journal and some papers, so you can um, you can just present it like your publications, like your uh, reference references to your publications, so you can just negotiate it. And uh, can I uh, add some information about that? Um, about uh, the the application process, um, there are. Uh, some uh, individual achievements you can uh, upload through, through your personal account, um, but it's not so much. Um, there are only two of them. It's um, the Diploma of Competition of Managers, Leaders of Russia, and the second one is a Certificate of Online Courses, courses uh, in the Field of Economics and Management. Um, I mean, this is a uh, the right courses uh, based uh, on Open You Do and uh, Coursera, uh, yes, of course, by SPBU. And uh, the list of these courses I can send to the chat just in a few minutes. Okay, thank you very much. It's really valuable information since uh, once it wasn't possible to do any extra online courses, uh, but right, right now I see that it is possible and if i'm not mistaken uh, it will give me like five uh, five extra uh, score if i'm not mistaken uh, if i'm speaking about online courses in open you do or so. uh, am i right or it will be um, said to, uh, you will say about it later yes um you're right uh, but um points for individual achievements are awarded only if you receive at least um, 65 points on the exam economics and management. So it's um, okay. See, so uh, like uh, the minimum point, 65 percent, that should be achieved. But should be uh, just one course or several courses. For example, uh, I have chosen uh, a course which is connected with management. I successfully passed it, but I would like to have some more, or I have to choose just one course and. Uh, uh, send it uh, to an application procedure. Uh -huh. Of okay. of course, you can choose um, as much courses as uh, you want, but um, as uh, an admission committee um, can give you um, maximum five points uh, for this uh, achievement. So the uh, certificates um, of uh, certificates or maybe diploma of, of uh, competition uh, can't sum up. Yes, you are welcome. You can ask your question. I see your head. head. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Aftandil, Aftandil Gesezada. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry that uh, I couldn't join before, like I had the technical problems, uh, therefore I will ask you to send me the presentation if it is possible. Uh, my question is generally about admission process. Uh, when I check uh, your website, uh, I mean, I found almost all useful information. Uh, I know the main requirements, uh, the documents we should upload. But the one thing is not clear for me exactly about the examination. Uh, I mean, 
after uh, we sent all documents, so including uh, research proposal, motivation letter, and others. So we will be examined uh, by you, like it's an online format, or because I mean I'm an international student and I don't have a possibility to come to uh, St. Petersburg for just examination. And if it is yes, uh, how will be exam format? I mean, how we can uh, like uh, get uh, useful information uh, about uh, the exam procedures, and then we'll be informed with uh, the result of examination. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much uh, for your time in advance. Um, thank you for your question, but as I understood, uh, you will um, apply as a foreign uh, citizen. Am I right? Uh, yes, yes. A foreign citizen, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So if you apply as a foreign citizen, you uh, have uploaded uh, your portfolio because the exams is only for Russian citizens and uh, uh, some Belarus, Ukraine and so on. So um, about uh, if you know if you want to know more about this procedure, I recommend you to contact to admissions office for uh, foreign citizens and I will uh, send a link uh, with this context uh, to the chat. Um, sorry, I couldn't understand very like exactly. So if I am foreign citizen, like uh, I'm from Azerbaijan, so I will not give any like exam or, or what? You just admit your portfolio. Yes, uh -huh, yes. That's that's right. Right. And using the link that Natalia uploaded in the chat, you may just uh, finalize uh, all the documents. I mean, you you, you may just um, um, see the or what kind of documents uh, are needed for that. Uh, okay, uh, then uh, I mean, participating not participating in the examination will not somehow decrease uh, like our uh, chance uh, for to get admission. Excuse me, can you repeat the uh, question? I mean, uh, I mean, if we are not like, uh, how can I say, participating in examination procedure, and I mean, as you said, we are foreign citizen, and uh, how uh, it will affect our uh, evaluation process? Um, your relation, oh, oh, sorry. Um, your, um, you should, um, as uh, Russian uh, citizens, uh, upload your uh, documents via uh -huh. uh, SPBU website, uh -huh. and uh, um, you have uploaded your portfolio too, and some uh -huh. other, and some other documents. But I'm not sure about that because it's um, uh, our colleagues uh, can. Um, uh, give you more information about that. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Just uh, I have one question more. Sorry. Uh, yes. During the uh, preparation of a research proposal, can we contact these potential supervisors or not? Yes, of course. Uh, but uh, the uh, the final the the, the um, updated list of the academic advisors for the next academic year will be available at the end of the ma uh, and end of the May. So. Uh -huh. uh, if you go now to the JSON website, this uh, um, so it will be some updates. So uh -huh. I suggest you to wait a little bit. And um, what area are you interested in uh, your research? In what area? Uh, in organizational behavior, organizational you... design. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, but you may just uh, um, just wait a little bit uh, for this update because each year. Uh -huh. We have a new list of academic advisors, uh, uh -huh. and uh, and of course you may contact uh, academic advisor in advance. Um, you may just have a discussion about your research proposal, and of course to have some recommendations from uh -huh. your academic advisor, and maybe you just have a preliminary agreement with uh -huh. this person to, if in case of your admission, to work together. Um, uh -huh. um, during your study and the program, so this. Uh -huh. helps this is absolutely right way to be prepared. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, almost all clear. It's, sorry, I just I will ask the final question. Of course, uh, of course. Take your uh -huh. time. Uh, in bachelor's degree, I received like uh, I focused on political science, and in master's degree, uh, I I focused on uh, political analysis and public policy. So, uh, 
I mean, do you require management background, either in like uh, academic uh, sense or in professional experience? Do you have such requirement or it doesn't really like important for admission process? I would say that it's not so important for admission process. The most important issue that uh, you uh, apply for the program because you would like to to build your career in uh -huh. this research area. Uh -huh. uh, because we have, a, to be honest, we have a many, not many, but some cases of students uh -huh. who would like just to get a degree and uh -huh. trying to combine the uh, workload with the um, studying on, on the program, and this is impossible. So this turned to be different academic leaves without any kind of like results and etc. And uh, uh -huh. um, to be honest, it's from our side. We are looking for for people. We are looking for like uh, people that who would like to build their career in any academia, and uh, we'll help them to be. Uh, part of this global academic environment, global academic research, and uh, this is our primary agenda because this is this is not only the case of getting like a formal candidate degree uh, from mm -hmm. Saint Petersburg State University um, because all KPIs on all activities, all courses that we deliver. This is for building this academic career. So this is much more important. Whether you have motivation to uh, um, to build your um, like life li life pipeline with uh, uh -huh. connected with with the research, this is very important. And uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. Okay. All clear. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions? But, but academic career is quite like challengeable and very interesting basically, uh, in terms of that you can create knowledge, you can just disseminate knowledge uh, for a different businesses, for a different countries, for a different societies. So this is uh, like a very like important, let's say work to create a knowledge that may change the world. And um, uh, this is really interesting agenda, uh, basically. Uh -huh. uh, sorry, I, I just would like to uh, add one thing more. Uh, I mean, the specialization that I want to focus is organizational behavior is not just about like economics or, or I mean, statistics. It, it combines also like social sciences, uh, so, uh, sociology, public economics and uh, psychology. I mean, if I'm not mistaken. This is this is okay because um, I mean we we need to connect it with management of course, and um, but uh, this is this is okay absolutely because for example I'm doing my research in talent management and this not only about statistics and economics, uh, uh -huh. this is about psychological issues and this is about their um, let's say social theory the background. So this is about many, many, many things. Uh, this is about international business as well, because people like around, and we may say like um, on it from different angles. So, uh, uh, but but again, the most important that that uh, you need to have your study to, within this uh, kind of management background. I, I mean, background mm -hmm. as a as a field of study. But what you do inside, you may just combine with the different like areas around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Uh, professor, uh, let me, <laughs> my question is endless. Uh, what about like uh, scholarship opportunities? I mean, as far as I know, you offer a uh, full scholarship uh, either for uh, Russian students or, and international students. But what about students? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I got information that you offer as generalists 30,000 rubles uh, for uh, all applicants, but is it also eligible for international students, or you just give uh, such money for to Russian students? Um, uh, I, I I cannot say exactly at the time uh, because the policies are going to be changed. I mean, they are changing quite quite uh, fast and. Uh, um, I know that we will suggest a scholarship for uh, those who take uh, part in a competition. Uh -huh. So uh, if you are take part in the competition, 
even if you are from um if you are just in um have international um foreign citizenship uh mm -hmm. you may receive the scholarship uh but this scholarship that we mentioned in, in the presentation they are not limited to i mean that if you are actively participated in different research projects uh, with your academic advisors and you apply for different grants this is uh also additional uh like uh financing um mm -hmm. for you uh as i already mentioned that all all memberships in the different um academic associations and uh conference participation that are covered additionally by the by the program by the school so um but again uh you have a lot of different opportunities to be uh, uh with it to be in i mean to get additional funding but mm -hmm. different grants uh, but if a lot different like um collaborative projects uh, uh with the different funds and mm -hmm. etc so this is mm -hmm. like um, many opportunities it's everything is dependent on you how you active in terms of the collaboration in terms of research and that's it mm -hmm. okay so, all clear thank you very much you're welcome Any other questions? Okay, if not, maybe we can just stop, stop for today. And uh, of course, uh, uh, please uh, do not hesitate to write your questions to me and to Natalia. And as previously mentioned, it's better if you just address uh, admission questions to Natalia. Mm, it will be faster in terms of the reply, but uh, if you are wondering for, um, about the content of the of the program and uh, different courses, collaboration uh, perspective, or you need my advice in terms of their uh, suggestion for your academic advisors, for example, you may ask um, that you are interested in a particular topic and I can advise you maybe to whom you may contact. Um, so um, and this you are welcome to to contact me anytime um, thank you very much thank you thank you one more time thank you